Hey everyone, Kurazar here with a bit of a different video than usual. In case you're new to the channel, or you're not new but live under a rock, you might not have heard about my laptop going kaput. Long story short, I ended up buying a new one and after ironing out a ton of wrinkles, here we are with me recording this video on the new computer. I've gotten a lot of questions in the past about my recording setup and workflow, and I thought I could turn this setback into an opportunity to share my process for setting up my computer for recording Vintage Story, as well as some of the, uh, challenges I faced along the way. Let's get to it. Once I get a new PC and have Vintage Story installed along with any mods I'm going to be using, the next thing is figuring out what application to use for recording audio and video. For most games, OBS is an easy default option. It's versatile and powerful, along with being easy to use and heavily customizable. In particular, it has excellent options for filtering your audio so that your raw videos come out sounding clean, which removes the need for a lot of post-processing work and headache. However, Vintage Story is not most games. It uses a graphical renderer called OpenGL 3.3, which came out in early 2010. Ooh. That's over 13 years ago. Not many things in software survive that long. And here's where I hit the first snag. When I started making test videos, I started hearing a gross audio crackle every time I opened Vintage Story, and about 10 seconds after I closed it. It even happened any time a Discord notification came in, and then I realized it happened with any audio. The noise didn't come across in videos, so it wasn't a problem per se, but it got annoying really quickly. Luckily, I am well versed in Google Foo, actually DuckDuckFoo, and after trawling many forum and Reddit posts, I came to the conclusion that it was caused by the audio chip entering and leaving low power mode. Say what? The next obvious step was to figure out a way to disable low power mode. However, Realtek, the audio chip maker, removed the ability to turn this off sometime in 2020 or 2021, and I wasn't about to use a driver that was made three years before my laptop was a twinkle in a manufacturer's eye. So I spent another couple hours fishing on the internet, and lo and behold, I found it. Some copy pasta, marinara, and a YouTube video led me to the Windows Registry. Deep in the bells of this arcane grimoire lay the secret text that needed to be altered by a Windows Archmage, or Windows Admin. Seriously though, this shouldn't be necessary, and if you're not really familiar with Windows, I don't recommend mucking around in here. You can really mess things up. So with my registry hack in hand, and set to reapply every time the computer starts up, I was ready to go. Or so I thought. I was finally able to start testing recordings, but I discovered that OBS had a new ace up its sleeve. Anytime I minimized Vintage Story to review a recording or to chat on Discord, the game would crash, but only if I had OBS open. So it was back to playing Windows Administrator Simulator 2023 again. This time, however, I didn't come up with any solutions that worked. I got a lot of great suggestions from other creators who weren't having the same problem I was, but ultimately, after several hours of tinkering and testing, but definitely no cussing, I came to the conclusion that I was going to have to find another screen recording solution or be very, very careful while recording with OBS. So, back to testing my recording. I did several tests using OBS in different configurations to test out the audio and video quality. Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. I ended up recording the first episode since our little hiatus on this new PC using OBS, but I was nervous the entire time. I was just waiting for it to crash, and I couldn't alt-tab out to check the recording and make sure it was actually working. On top of that, OBS's penchant for saving videos without a color space reared its ugly head again, and during editing of episode 32, which is the first episode since we got back, I had to re-compress an entire segment of the raw videos in order to make them work. And that's just not tenable. But, since this computer has an NVIDIA RTX 3070 Ti graphics card, I figured it would make sense to try out Shadowplay again. I had used Shadowplay on my old Dell laptop, but that was mostly because it was too weak to be able to record Vintage Story using OBS at a watchable frame rate. So, I fired it up. Hello everyone, my name is Korazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. As you may or may not be able to see in YouTube, the video quality ended up being better than an OBS, but there's an audible hiss in the audio, and overall it was very quiet. Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. But 
After looking into some other recording software, I concluded that I was going to have to choose between the good audio in OBS but suffer constant game crashes and video issues, or awful audio quality from Shadowplay but at least not constantly be losing progress and potentially corrupting my save. I'll give you a hint. I chose not crashing. With that decision made, it was time to see what I could do to mitigate the bad audio from Shadowplay. The new PC supports NVIDIA Broadcast in its AI-based audio noise remover and cleanup, so I give that a shot. Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. The sound still had an issue with the hissing. I also toyed around with the idea of recording the clips, ripping the mic audio out of the video, processing that using Audacity's noise removal, and then reinserting the audio back in each video. But that was a 30 minute extra process on top of the time I already spend editing. This could cause problems with getting two of these videos out each week. On top of that, it also muddied my vocals. Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. And then, I remembered. Back when I had been tinkering with my audio on the old Dell, I had come across some free audio enhancement software that helped clean up my microphone. There was only one little problem. I couldn't recall the name. Back to the interweb searches I went, and finally I found it. Equalizer APO. It's a piece of software that inserts itself between your audio input and Windows so that it gets to have the first swing at fixing your audio before Windows gets to it. After installing Equalizer APO, I installed the Wurman RN Noise plugin, the same kind of noise reduction plugin that OBS uses, and Rough Rider 3, a free compressor plugin. This second one helps keep my voice from being too dynamic. That is, it helps keep it at a consistent volume. And then, after some testing, we're gold, baby. We're ready to rumble. Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. From here, it's as simple as recording video and editing a shotcut. Away we go! Or so I thought. It was during all these trials and testing that I discovered something concerning. I mean, it's reasonably smooth at 60 FPS here, mostly. And jump, jump, jump. Get some crazy movement here. And why am I not jumping? Um, okay. I can jump. Uh, can I jump? Okay, what's going on? So I can jump forward. I can jump backward. I can jump right. I can jump left. I can jump back left. I can jump... Oh, that was back right. I can jump forward right. I can jump back left. I can jump... I cannot jump... What? 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 It turns out this laptop's keyboard uses some really outdated method to pretend like it has some amount of key rollover. That being the ability for both your keyboard and computer to comprehend when you're pressing more than one key at a time. That way you can do things like hold down shift and run while using W and A, and then jump at the same time. On this keyboard, it works fine with the W, A, S, and D keys, which is great for righties, but I'm not right-handed. And the rollover zones that Acer use on this laptop don't let me use the same O, K, L, and semicolon keys for movement that I've been using for since forever, unless I can live without being able to jump while moving forward and left. And being frank here, I can't live with that. After a bit of experimentation, I did discover that if I move my hand two keys to the left of the keyboard, I can do all the things I need to. Sprinting, crouching, jumping, you name it, it seems to work mm, just fine. I guess I'm just spoiled by computers that implement key rollover methods invented in, oh, the mid-2000s? Everything was good, so I'm ready to start recording and editing. Or so I thought. Okay, so this next hitch wasn't quite so bad, but the new computer's screen resolution is 1440p, also called 2K. That means it has about 75% more pixels than my previous computer, which ran at 1080p. The larger file sizes aren't much of a problem, in fact they're only a tiny bit larger than before, but all of the intro graphics and other things I show on screen in each video are now way too small, and I didn't realize it until I'd already finished editing the first video since this little break started. 
But with just a little bit of editing of these things, it looks like I do have everything in order. For real this time. I actually mean it. After recording another episode of Vintage Story and also a bit of Star Sector, I think things are finally in order. In short, we're back and ready to roll, baby. We still have plenty of topics to cover, systems to explain, rooms to build, and lanes to explore in the guide season 2. So, there's only one thing left to say. Let's get to it. <laughs>